O Canada Conversations are a creation of IOM, made available under the Creative Commons 3.0 IGO. Please refer to the text of the audiobook for the copyright mark and the full legal code. Funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Financé par Immigration, Refugees et Citoyenneté Canada. O Canada Conversations, Dialogue Number 36. Sponsors, Organizations, Services. The following dialogue is related to Unit 3, Supports and Services from the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. For more information, refer to the following units of the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. 3.9. Government-Funded Organizations for All Newcomers. 3.10. Settlement Situations. 3.11. Other Long-Term Settlement Services in Your Community 3.12 Where Can You Find Free Sources of Information? It has been one and a half years since Sadia and Obasi arrived in Canada. They are invited to speak to refugees who have just arrived in Canada at a settlement agency. Sadia explains how she dealt with disagreements with her sponsor and what she did to overcome distress that came with language barriers and homesickness. Obasi shares his experience on issues with permanent housing and what he did to find his first job. He also gives useful tips like accessing long-term settlement services. Sadia, Obasi, and other newcomers sit in a room at a settlement service provider in Winnipeg, Canada. A settlement counselor begins the session. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session at our organization. Today we have two special guests who will share their journey to Canada and the settlement process they have gone through. Nice to meet you all. My name is Sadia. I came to Canada one and a half years ago. I was very excited and scared at the same time. It was good to finally live in a safe place, but it was so far away from home. I am under the private sponsorship of Refugees Program, so my sponsors guided me on what to do, and they answered all my questions when I needed help, just like I was told during the Canadian Orientation Abroad session by the International Organization for Migration before coming to Canada. I also reached out to the organization we are at today to get more information on settlement services. They gave me advice on everything, from finding language classes to searching for a job. Do you have any tips to share for people who have just arrived in Canada? Sure. My first tip is for people who are part of the private sponsorship of Refugees Programme. If you have a concern, talk to your sponsors first. Asking them questions is the best first step to resolve any misunderstandings or issues you might have. For example, at first, I assumed my sponsors would be able to watch my youngest child while my older daughter came with me to the dentist. When my sponsors refused, I was upset and felt that they did not care about me and my family. I talked with them about it, and they explained that as a sponsor, they hold some responsibilities, but they are not responsible for babysitting my children. They said that if I ever had an emergency, they would help me, but that I should learn to make arrangements for my children to be supervised when I have an outside commitment. They reminded me that their support is limited and will not be forever. So I have to build my independence gradually. The next day, my sponsors helped me start the process of finding a babysitter for my youngest child. That is good information. What is your second tip for everyone here? My second tip is for all newcomers. You should know that learning the language can be difficult but there is help available. Six months after I arrived, I began to feel discouraged and lost. My children learned English quickly, but I did not. 
even though I was going to adult language classes. I still could not speak very well, and I was struggling in my college courses too. I felt like I would never be able to learn the language, and that I was too old to adjust to a new country that was so different from my own. So, I stopped going to language classes without telling my sponsors, and quit my part-time job, and skipped classes from my college courses. Instead, I stayed home, watching TV or sleeping. After dropping out of language classes, I felt sad and isolated. I was not hungry anymore and would eat less. I did not know what to do. My sponsors and I were disagreeing a lot at that time. When my sponsors learned that I had stopped going to classes, they were worried about me. They reminded me that becoming independent is a process that will take time and that I should not give up. They encouraged me to make as much effort as possible to learn the language and continue my studies. That seems very hard. In fact, many newcomers to Canada feel the same way, as it can be challenging to learn a new language when you are an adult. Can you tell the room how you overcame your difficult time? I made an appointment with a settlement worker here at this settlement organization for newcomers. I met with a settlement worker who listened to me and gave me useful advice. She helped me find a mental health care professional. She helped me restore communication and trust with my sponsors. I also joined a newcomer support group for mental health as well. We all go through tough times in life, and it is perfectly okay in Canada to get help from mental health care professionals. You have the right to privacy and confidentiality, except for life-threatening situations or conditions. During this period, when my sponsors and I were disagreeing, I was worried they might stop providing me financial support or would ask me to repay them. I learned that this is not allowed, and they have to continue providing me with financial support despite the disagreement. Remember, everyone, the government does not allow sponsors to stop financial support or ask you to repay them what they spent to sponsor you. Since your sponsors are legally responsible for providing you limited financial support for a certain amount of time. In fact, after I got help from the settlement organization, I talked to my sponsors about everything, and my emotional health gradually improved. My sponsors helped me register again for language classes, but this time on a part-time basis, in the mornings only. What do you do in the afternoon, then? I go to my classes at the college. Some afternoons, I volunteer at a community center. It helps me to get to know more people in my community. It also helps me practice the language and learn new skills. I feel much happier these days, and I have improved my relationship with my sponsors. It is good that you sought help at the right time. Remember, everyone, you are never alone. There will be someone to help you when you ask for help. What should we do when we feel our sponsors cannot help us? If there is a situation where your sponsors cannot help you, or you do not have sponsors as part of your resettlement program, you can seek the help of a government-funded organization for newcomers in your community, like where we are right now. A settlement worker here can provide you with useful advice. You can also contact the Government of Canada for help by emailing them at ircc.psr.caserevue.revue-du-cas-psr.ircc at cic.gc.ca. It is quite a long email. I see some of you are writing it down. Let me spell it out for you. It is I R 
c c dot p s r dot c a s e r e v i e w r e v u e d e c a s p s r dot i r c c at c i c dot g c dot c a thank you all for listening i hope your settlement journey in canada goes well the settlement counselor invites obasi to share his settlement experience hello everyone my name is obasi I would like to share my story and tell you how government-funded organizations for newcomers helped me with many settlement issues. I came to Canada under the Government Assisted Refugees Program. When I first arrived at my permanent housing, I found there were many problems with the apartment. The place was old and in need of repair. Some things like the bathroom sink faucet and the front door lock were not working properly. I was frustrated and did not know who to talk to. I have a family that depends on me, so I wanted to get it fixed right away. How did you solve the problem? I called my government-funded organization and politely explained all the problems in the apartment. Over the next few days, they spoke with the landlord who repaired the issues. Good for you. For those of you here under the Government Assisted Refugees Program, always ask your government-funded organization if there is anything you need help with. Things went relatively smoothly for the rest of my initial settlement period. The caseworker at the government-funded organization arranged the delivery of some furniture to my apartment. After that, I wanted to start searching for a job, but I did not know how. What did you do? I decided once again to approach the government-funded organization. They scheduled me for an appointment with this settlement organization that helped me. That is great. Government-funded organizations for newcomers, like the one where we are at today, are always here to help you. This is my first tip. I was told that if you need help from your government-funded organization or your sponsors, you should give them a call. Always remember to leave a detailed voicemail. Include your contact information so the staff can properly follow up. Can you tell everyone here what it was like when you came to our offices? When I arrived for my appointment, the counselor was very nice. They gave me resources for my job search helped me make a CV and prepare for job interviews. I asked them if my previous work experience as a welder from my country can be recognized, and they advised me on how to have my previous studies and credentials assessed. I found a job as an assembly line worker at first. Then, after a few months of taking training courses, I was able to work as a welder again. Remember everyone, Your studies at a college, institute, or university outside Canada might not be automatically recognized in Canada. To continue your studies or work in a certain occupation in Canada, your previous studies need to be assessed. Right. It is also important to collect as many documents, including diplomas, degrees, school transcripts, proof of work history, and employer references. What is your next tip for the group? I would like to tell you about the support from government-funded organizations for all newcomers. My second tip is to make use of the free long-term services that are available to you as a permanent resident until you become a Canadian citizen. Government-funded organizations can offer you guidance and give you a way to build a network of friends in your new community. That would help everyone a lot. These organizations are also called settlement agencies, 
and are common in Canada. They help all newcomers to settle into their new community. Along with helping you register for free language classes and teaching you how to search for a job, they can also do other things, like resolving settlement challenges and helping you get involved in your community. Some communities have all these long-term services, and some might have only a few. It depends. Many community centers offer services that all people, including permanent residents, can access for free or at a low cost. Tell us about some long-term settlement services you accessed. There were various training programs available in my community by government-funded organizations. I learned how to use some software programs and how to communicate professionally in English. They helped me adjust to my new life and increase my chances of finding a job. Another organization also gave me resources on other training, so I was better prepared for the Canadian job sector. Government-funded organizations are good starting points when getting adjusted to your new life in Canada. Also, at the local library, I was able to access the Internet for free to search for jobs. I could also read newspapers and borrow books. You are right. Local libraries are great resources. I now visit the library two or three times a week. I was able to apply to jobs online using their computers and borrow books and films to improve English. My English is much better thanks to language classes, studying at the library, talking with people, and reading signs out on the street. Did you also make new friends in your community? Definitely. Language classes were a great way to make new friends. In the summer, we meet up on the first Sunday of the month for picnics at public parks. The parks also have activity areas with equipment where children can play all year round. Please tell the room what other places were helpful in learning about Canada. There are so many. I have been to museums where you can learn about Canada's history, culture, and art. Places of worship like synagogues, mosques, and churches where you can practice your faith with others. And I especially like my neighborhood community center, where I signed up for an exercise class. You can also take part in team sports there and make friends. These cultural and religious institutions are good places to learn about people and culture in Canada. Can you also explain other long-term settlement services? Sure. If you're feeling sad, worried, or stressed, you can talk to someone at a free mental health clinic. It is a confidential and non-judgmental service. If you're having any issues related to money, you can book an appointment at your local bank. The same thing goes for seeking advice on issues related to the law. You can go to legal aid clinics for help. Where can people here get help writing a resume and looking for a job? As I said before, if you need long-term settlement support related to education and employment, you can go to a government-funded organization. If you are looking for help specifically related to writing a resume or CV, looking for a job, or preparing for a job interview, if you came here as under the Government Assisted Refugee Program, your government-funded organization can assist you. If you are seeking guidance in your community, there are often employment centers and settlement agencies available that can help. Everyone, all of you will be as knowledgeable as Obasi after a while, too. Can you tell us about what people can do in difficult situations? For instance, what can a person do if they do not have enough money to buy food? If there is ever an emergency where you do not have enough money from the government or your sponsors to buy the food you need, or need a safe place to sleep during a crisis at home, there are food banks available, as well as shelters and safe houses where you can go for protection. 
What should all of us do to call firefighters, ambulance, or the police in case of emergency? We call 911. Everyone, please keep in mind that government funded organizations like the one we are at today are responsible for supporting all newcomers. Do not be afraid to visit or ask for help. Workers here will protect your privacy. They are required to get your permission before they share any of your information. It will remain confidential. You can find more information about government-funded organizations using the Government of Canada tools online at cic.gc.ca. If you have any questions, there are also many free resources available online and over the phone. For official information on the Government of Canada and government services, you can go to canada.ca. C A N A D A dot C A. Or call 1 888 622 6232, Service Canada Centre. For information on federal, provincial and territorial benefits for newcomers, you can check out benefitsfinder.services.gc.ca B-E-N-E-F-I-T-S-F-I-N-D-E-R dot S-E-R V I C E S dot G C dot C A for free, confidential, multilingual information available 24 hours a day regarding various services, you can call 211. For information on how to navigate your new community, there are maps available online. I hope this advice was helpful for you, and I hope that you keep these tips in mind while you settle into your new home in Canada. Welcome! End of Dialogue Unit